Hey guys, Telegram Sam here. If you don't already know, I have an Instagram. It's Telegram underscore Sam underscore Vinyl. So if you're on Instagram, check me out there. But recently, Vinyl Richie made a video. Uh, I think it was called like 10 records that no one else in the VC has. It was a contest entry that he did for a channel called TKR Video Central. Um, this isn't an official entry for TKR's uh, contest, but Vinyl Richie named me and like nearly everyone else in the Vinyl community to, to make a video like like his uh, to see the cool obscure records that we all have in our collections. And I thought it was a really cool idea. And uh, some of the stuff I was even surprised by how rare and obscure some of the records I had in my own collection were. Um, most of them, are, uh, so the way I kind of went about this was on Discogs you know, every time you like look for a record or in a specific pressing, it'll tell you like how many people have that record, how many people want that record. So I kind of based that uh, how rare or obscure something was that if it had around like 50 people had it, I consider that rare and obscure because I feel like most people that take record collecting and music collecting seriously at least upload and keep track of their. Uh, what they have in their collection on Discog, so that's kind of the way I, I gauged what I had as like rare or obscure. Um, like Vinyl Richie, I, I chose uh, five 45s and five LPs. I'm going to save the best for last because the last record I'm going to show is the only record uh, that was pressed in the world and I believe I'm the only person that ha has it, and at least that's what I've been told. So. The last record I for sure know is a very, very rare obscure record because there's only one press and I'm the only person that has it, so saving the best for last. Okay, first off, for the 45s, um, and I'll also link Vinyl Richie and TKR Video Central's uh, channels down below if you want to go check them out. First off, we have The Vendettas. Uh, this is Can't Stop backed with uh, Gasoline. This is an original 1997 US first press of this great garage rock punk band from Atlanta, Georgia. I believed this I believe this was their first release. Um, and then they released a few uh, 45s and I believe one album before they kind of disbanded in like the mid 2000s. but this is a really really uh, awesome uh, just very fast paced uh, great killer garage punk rock. Um, and currently only seven people say they have it on Discog, so I guess you can say this rare. And there was also another version that was like limited edition, but more people have that one than this one, which is interesting considering the other one's limited edition. Uh, but yeah, you can tell it's like very DIY because this is the front cover and then um, this is the back cover. So obviously it's something that they kind of just like put together it comes with this little insert kind of telling you info about the band, where you can mail them, <laughs> uh, and then this is the 45. I believe it was a self-release. Then next up, another great uh, sort of uh, garage punk blues uh, 45. This is Big Damn Roach backed with Nothing Hurts Like My Back Inside by the Amoral Lee County Killers. This is original 2000 US press. With the white cover there was another version that was the same picture but the background was yellow that um, I guess is more easier to find than the white cover. But yeah, like I said, great blues garage. Punk and currently on Discogs, only nine people say they have this. So this is a cool little gem. Again, this one also is just very DIY. Has this is the front, the back, this fold out, um, and then this is what the 45 looks like. And then this one's pretty interesting. This is a uh, the self-titled. Uh, Mark Chapman experience. This is a 1992 US press of this garage noise lo-fi group. Um, this was the only release from this group and the only thing I could really find about it is that it was a Seattle record from the early 90s that was distributed by the record gallery in Fremont. I 
you literally can't even find who played on this, but it's really, really cool. I think I found this in, at an antique store of all places for like a couple bucks. And that's pretty much what it's worth. It's not really worth anything. But um, came on this Bougie Records, I believe that's what it's supposed to be. And uh, this is the back. But yeah, currently on Discogs, uh, only 15 people say that they have this. And then this one's probably one of my most like prized possessions in my uh, sort of 45s collection. This is um, Memories of El Monte by the Penguins, backed with Confidential by Sunny Knight. This is an early 60s US press of some doo-wop R&B soul. But the thing that is really cool about this is that the song that the Penguins do, Mom, uh, Memories of El Monte, is written by, I don't know if my camera will focus, but it is partially written by Frank Zappa. This is one of his most early recordings of a known Frank Zappa song. Um, but yeah, again, this was just something I found at one of my local stores and was just completely blown away that I found this. Um, these don't go for that much. I think like the average median price is like 20 bucks. Um, but from what the research I did, um, uh, before Frank Zappa started like recording his own music, uh, he in the late 50s did like a couple soundtracks for these crappy like not even B movies, they were C and D movies. And then he started uh, writing uh, songs for other artists, including this one. And this is one of the earliest known ones. Um, but yeah, just a really cool piece of history to have. And I believe uh, this was only ever released on the specific Gorda label. But yeah, really cool piece of music history and Frank Zappa history to have. And currently on Discogs, only eight people have this. So super, super cool. Uh, next up, we have Detroit Hooker Fight backed with Sister Sybil by the People Electric. Uh, this is a 2013 US press. Uh, this was the only release from this group. It was self-released and I describe them as like garage rock, uh, stoner rock. Um, I believe they're a Portland, Oregon band from the little card that came on the inside that tells you who played on it and it says it's made in Portland, Oregon. Uh, but yeah, I really dig this. Again, it was another <laughs> antique antique store find. Uh, yeah, some of the craziest stuff I found has been at uh, antique stores. Um, but currently on Discogs, only eight people say they have this, so that's cool. And it came on this white vinyl. These really cool um, labels. Really dig the style of them. All right, so that's it for my 45. Next up, the long plays. Again, this was another one I found at a antique store for for a very very good price. Uh, this is the self-titled album by Blood Rock. This is an original 1970 UK European press. Um, I've described them as hard rock, psych, kind of like proto-metal, uh, but the original UK presses I guess were very limited because this is a Texas band, so there was a lot of US versions uh, of this album, but this was the only UK European press I think ever released, and it was a very limited release. So I don't know how it ended up in Portland, Oregon, some random antique store for like $15, but I was the person that found it. Um, but yeah, only 52 people say that they currently have this on Discogs, and these go for like a shock shockingly uh, good amount of money, and uh, yeah, I was very, very pleased to, to find this, and it's in really great condition, and it came on the green capital label. And next up, I was surprised to uh, find out how where this pressing of this very popular album is, but this is um, one of my most prized pos possessions in my record collection, probably one of my best finds from last year. This is Blank Generation by Richard Hell and the Voidoids. This is an original 1977 US press, I mean one of the most influential 
punk rock albums ever, especially in the whole New York scene. Uh, but this is an LW pressing. I think there was four or five different original 1977 pressings, but from all the research I could find, the most uh, limited and rare one is this LW pressing. I'm not sure what the LW stands for. If there's anyone that knows anything about what that means, let me know. Uh, but currently on Discogs, only 57 people say they have this. So I was kind of surprised to find out how rare this is because I feel like this is such a popular and well-known album, especially in, you know, punk. So yeah, that was a nice little discovery from this. <laughs> and uh, this one just came on Sire, yellow label. And next up, uh, we have uh, Just a Little Lovin' Will Go a Long Way in Other Country and Western Favorites by Juan Harmon. Um, this is an early 60s Canadian press of this folk country album. I believe I found this at a thrift store. Um, and it pretty much cost what I paid for it at the thrift store. It's like a two to five dollar record. Um, but yeah, just very basic country western. I mean, I don't hate it. I don't think it's like the worst thing I've ever heard, but you know, it's very similar to, you know, like Conway Twitty. Um, uh, what was that guy's name that Dolly Parton did that show with? Uh, Porter, Poor Wagner, um, very typical of that early 60s sort of corny uh, western music. But during the summer, it's kind of like when I just like to throw on, but currently, on Discogs, 11 people say they have this, so it's pretty rare, I guess. And it came on this cool silver and black crown label. And then next up we have um, I'm a One Man Band by Johnny Lobo. Uh, this is a great blues, country, rock, um, I would say, that I couldn't find a year on here, but I'm assuming it was recent, re recently released. U.S. Press, uh, Gr Craig sent me this um, a while back when he sent me that huge box of great punk and garage music. Um, but I guess he's really good friends with uh, this guy, Johnny Lobo, and uh, has done some stuff with him, and I guess uh, Johnny also owns a uh, music store in um, Memphis, Tennessee, and uh, yeah, this is really cool. Reminds me a lot of Hazel Atkins. I get a lot of comments about the Hazel Atkins album I have over there, and he reminds me a lot of him, just like the very DIY sort of uh, crazy garage punk rockabilly sort of thing he's doing on here. Um, and I guess he also builds and plays his own cigar guitars, so, or cigar box guitars, which is really dope. But yeah, this is a really cool one, and currently on Discogs, only 14 people say they have it. So yeah, definitely check him out if you're not familiar with him. I believe he has a website, or he has his own um, record uh, thing called Lobow Records, L-O-W-E-B-O-W. -O -W. So I bet if he did some... Uh, searching on the internet, you can probably find him. And this one just came on his own label, white. And last but not least, I am the only person to own this record because there's only one of these pressed. Uh, this is Volume 2 by Cryptigger. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Cryptigger, he has a great um, Instagram. This is the little card that came in it that has his Instagram stuff and his Mixcloud. But essentially he is an avid collector of sort of obscure, weird 45s. And we follow each other on Instagram and I saw a while back he was doing a raffle for, for this. You essentially just had to um, send him $5 and you were entered into the raffle. And I never win these things and I won it. Um, it's essentially a great comp of some of his, the cool 45s he has. Um, this is the track listing of everything that's featured on here. My camera wants to focus, which it's not going to do. But you have like Ronnie Hawkins, Rudy Ray Moore, Johnny Horton's I Got a Hole in My Puraguay, I think that's how you say it. Uh, Irma Thomas, just some really cool stuff on there and some stuff I've never heard of before. 
But yeah, he has a great Instagram. He's always posting cool stuff. And like I said, I believe he makes really cool sort of uh, playlists and mixes on his mix cloud of some of the cool stuff he finds. And then this is the back of the, of the record. I believe that's his little record den. But yeah, from what he told me, this is the only one pressed. I'm the only person that has it. So this is a really cool thing um, uh, to have in my collection. And uh, thanks Crypt Digger for the amazing, awesome uh, sharing of all the cool 45s you find. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.